Hey guys, Vlad here with AVT Astro. So today I wanted to talk about a pretty interesting topic and that is what are the most desirable and must have accessories for you to have for any type of telescope design. Uh, for those of you not familiar, I run a little astro blog called avt-astro.com where I do all kinds of fun scope reviews and just other astronomy related you know, content. Uh, so if you get a chance, check it out. Um, just in general, I've had the privilege of owning over a hundred scopes, more accessories than I can count, so um, that's really cool. Um, so what are the accessories that I take out every single time I go um, observing? Well, it'll kind of depend on the scope design that you're dealing with, and we'll actually cover all the different scope designs in this video. So we've got an SCT here represented, we've got a refractor here represented. Unfortunately, I don't have a small enough daub right now to fit into uh, this video. My daub is a 16 inch binoscope, a JMI 16 inch. So uh, that's a little bit too large <laughs> to fit into this video, uh, but we will cover that as well. Okay, so let's get into it. So what are the absolute must-have accessories for each telescope design? Well, we'll start with what I believe is one of the most popular telescopes. Uh, it's actually one that I recommend and that would be the SCT type of telescope, um, which is this design here. The next are 6 SCs, a telescope that I recommend just in general for a very good beginner type of telescope for a bunch of different types of observing. So what is the number one accessory that I use every single time I take out one of these guys? Um, well, it's actually not a very expensive accessory, but it's a very, very practical one for a couple of reasons. And that's one of these dew shields. Um, all it is is it's, um, you know, it's like a plastic type of a cap that essentially what it'll do is it'll actually go around um, the front of uh, the corrector plate, the lens here that's in front of the scope. Um, and basically what it does is two things actually. So if you're observing um, in a relatively moist type of an environment, it'll actually help to prevent dew from forming on the front corrector plate. The other really awesome thing about this any time of year is that if you're observing in the city or anywhere where there's light, which is, you know, unfortunately where most of us observe, it'll actually help to block stray light from entering the telescope. So an absolute must-have accessory for any type of SCT type of telescope. Okay, so moving on to refractors. Um, these guys fortunately usually will have a dew shield built in so you really do not need to buy this um, which is kind of a you know that's kind of a big plus with refractors they will usually have a dew shield built in um, for dobs you usually do not need a dew shield so that is kind of nice because um, we're kind of assuming that you know we're dealing with scopes that are a thousand bucks or below They'll usually be a solid tube design and they're actually pretty well uh, protected from dew, so that's kind of a nice thing. The one thing that you will need if, uh, for a dog type of telescope is actually a laser uh, collimator. So with dogs you do need to align their optics every so often and um, the easiest way really to do it is with one of these laser collimators. They're not very expensive. And this is, I would consider, a, an absolute must-have accessory for a dog. Uh, so I'm not going to go into, um, you know, how to use this thing. Uh, but uh, essentially, there is a laser there, and um, it'll allow you to align your optics perfectly uh, on on your dog with with one of these guys. Refractors in general will never need collimation, so that's kind of a big plus side to these guys. Um, SCTs do need collimation every so often, just like a daub, uh, but you do not need a tool to do that. And I will actually make a, um, 
a YouTube video about that eventually. All right, so the next thing that I would really consider upgrading or possibly thinking about upgrading on uh, two of the three you know, popular telescope designs would actually be the star diagonal. So chances are when you buy a telescope, it'll come with the inch and a quarter star diagonal of some sorts. Um, and you know, quality wise, they're kind of hit and miss. Some of them could be, you know, decent quality and some of them can be um, rather poor qualities. So it really kind of depends. So how can you tell? Um, if you're wondering, you know, like, is this a good place to spend my hard-earned money, you know, especially when you're kind of newer to the hobby and you're kind of wondering what accessories you should get? Well, there's actually a really simple test to kind of do to determine if your star diagonal actually does need to be upgraded from an optical, from an optical perspective anyhow. Um, actually, so it, what you can do, especially really easily with an SCT type of telescope, is just take out the star diagonal kind of not as comfortable you know it's kind of hard on your neck but uh, you could put an eyepiece directly into the telescope without the diagonal and take a look at you know whatever objects you're interested in um, then you take the same eyepiece you put into the star diagonal and you take a look at that object um, if you can see a relatively you know decent difference between the view of no diagonal versus having the diagonal chances are maybe your diagonal is not as good of quality and it might be worth upgrading if you really can't see the difference visually chances are your star diagonal quality is actually not too bad um, and in that case it might not be worth upgrading it at least from an optical type of perspective uh, no star diagonal is going to improve your um, image quality or the quality of the view in general that is absolutely impossible the best view you'll ever get through your telescope is with no diagonal so any diagonal at, at best what it'll do is match uh, the view with no diagonal so do keep that in mind um, in general if you are thinking about upgrading your diagonal unless you're just like a super duper planetary observer and never planning on doing any type of wide field type of work. Uh, what I would actually recommend doing is uh, taking up a decent two inch diagonal. Um, these days anything that's uh, you know a good quality uh, dielectric two inch diagonal uh, will give you probably a pretty substantial uh, performance increase from you know these stock little diagonals that come with uh, most scopes. Um, again, you know, you can do the simple test of just, you know, trying out your diagonal that came with your telescope versus no diagonal and just see if you can actually see a difference in the view. If, chances are if you can't really see that visually, there, you know, your diagonal might actually be pretty good optically. Um, the other thing to kind of consider is that uh, the upgraded type of diagonals, they will have a compression ring in there to hold your eyepieces a lot better and not really mar them up. Um, they're just, you know, they're construction, constructed better too, so if they happen not to be better optically, the construction quality is better on these. So if you have either a uh, SCT or a uh, refractor, uh, chances are a diagonal is a pretty good upgrade for you. One thing to note um, with SCTs, if you are going to a 2 inch diagonal, you will need a 2 inch visual back as well. So basically what that will do is you will unscrew the inch and a quarter visual back that comes with your SCT and you'll screw this into the back of your SCT and then the, you know, the same diagonal that you could use with refractors will go in there. You can actually get a uh, SCT specific star diagonal that will just directly screw onto the back of the scope. I personally don't really like them because uh, I like the fact that I could just loosen the diagonal and be able to rotate it so like it'll point to different angles you know like when you're kind of slowing around the sky I just kind of like that better I don't really like SCT diagonals that are specifically meant for SCTs 
Um, also that way in the future, let's say you have a refractor and an SCT, you can share the diagonal between them. So that's really sweet. Okay, the next uh, must-have accessory that I'd also consider is actually a really simple one, and that's just a red flashlight. Um, these are just really nice to have if you ever go to star parties. I mean, I know that we have a pandemic going on right now, so <laughs> you know there there may or may not be star parties in your area going on. But if you do go to star parties, these are an absolute must-have. You know, just kind of courtesy items, so you're not kind of blinding people as you're setting up your equipment. But even at home, you know, a lot of times I'll use this. You know, just when I'm setting up my gear or just kind of checking out why something's not working uh, so that way I don't ruin my night vision. Awesome, awesome to have. Um, so yeah, um, red flashlight, absolutely amazing to have. So this is an absolute, you know, inexpensive astronomy accessory that, you know, really anybody should have. Okay, this next recommendation, it will kind of depend on the type of scope that you have. Um, if you have a motorized scope like the next stars, uh, this is very relevant, and that is, you know, some kind of a uh, battery pack. Um, so this is a Yeti 400, pretty high-end battery pack. You really, you know, by no stretch of the imagination, need anything this high-end. Uh, but in general, um, if I have a motorized type of scope out, chances are I will have one of these, um, one of my battery packs. I actually have several of them that are kind of several different sizes. I'll put a link to one that I kind of, you know, think is a pretty good, you know, kind of, you know, uh, inexpensive option for a battery pack. Uh, but yeah, this is a really nice accessory to have that way you just plug your scope in and you're just really, you know, like you'll power it all night, lot and all night long and you're not kind of worried about power. So awesome, awesome to have. Obviously, if you have a manual mount or if you have a DAB, which most of them are manual um, within the reasonable price range, um, you know, you really do not need a battery, but if you do have a go-to mount or something that's got track, and these are, uh, I would consider an accessory that I take out almost every single night while I'm observing. So after um, the battery, uh, the one thing that I use almost any time that I'm out observing is actually not something that I could show you because it's on my phone, which is recording this video. And that is a planetarium software, which is uh, the one that I use is called Sky Safari. There's you know quite a few good ones for either like you know like Apple phones or um, Android phones, or if you have a tablet, you can use them on those too. Uh, but basically, you know, you need to find your way around the night sky, um, and that's really you know it's relevant for both visual and for astrophotography. You need to find you know which object that you're you know trying to do. So uh, planetarium software, yes, it's an absolute must have these days. You know, I used to use paper maps all the time, and I still have them. And, you know, sometimes I'll reference them. Um, really, in the way, it's kind of for old times' sake. But yeah, the new planetarium software is just amazing. You know, like with the amount of detail that you have, and there's like audio descriptions and this, you know, like text descriptions of every object. So really awesome to have so that is one thing that i would consider an absolute essential thing you know to have on your phone or your tablet when you are observing all right so the next accessory is actually what i'm sitting on and that is a uh, astronomy observing chair um these you know this accessory it's not necessarily inexpensive you know this is kind of getting into a little bit more of the expensive side Probably not something that I'd recommend for your first purchase or anything like that. But certainly, you know, if you're feeling like you're going to be in the hobby for a while, this is certainly an absolute, um, I would consider a must-have accessory. So with these, these are kind of nice. Um, what you could do is you could actually adjust the height of, the, of your seating position to any height that you want. Um, so no matter what type of telescope I'm observing with, um, no matter where the eyepiece height is, um, even if I'm doing astrophotography, I always have one of these around. So awesome, awesome to have. 
Uh, so highly recommend it. And I'll post a link to um, you know a good version of one of these. Um, so yeah, absolutely a great accessory to have for any type of um, good astronomy uh, observing evening. All right, so. The next accessory that's kind of universal to pretty much any type of telescope design that I would really recommend and I use, you know, fairly often and fairly regularly um, is a uh, variable polarizing filter. So what this will do is it's actually two filters that are essentially stacked um, on top of one another and then you could kind of, you know, twist them to adjust essentially the brightness of any object um, on the night sky. Now, essentially what you're probably going to use this for is the moon. Um, and, so, you know, a lot of times I actually do like to use this, especially with the bigger scope, um, on the planets uh, and sometimes even on double stars to kind of uh, help to split them if they're a really bright double star. So, um, getting you know, into filters, this would be the very first one that I'd recommend because they're inexpensive and they actually work on a fairly wide range of objects. So, instead of buying just, you know, like a moon filter, this just kind of gives you that tunability to really adjust the brightness of the object. Um, so, I really, you know, think that this is worth the extra couple of bucks to get a, a polarizing filter instead of just a moon filter. Okay, so after you've got a uh, moon filter, um, you know, there's gazillions and gazillions of different filters out there for astronomy type of uh, things. So, you know, I, you know, you could easily spend a thousand bucks on filters uh, um, alone or more. Uh, the one filter that I use, and you know, I've probably got like over $500 worth of filters pretty easily. The one that I use um, fairly often and works on a lot of different types of objects is the Batter uh, Moon and Sky Glow filter. This is actually a pretty darn good planetary filter. It works well on um, Saturn, on Jupiter, on Mars, um, you know, so all the common planets. Um, it kind of increases the um, contrast of the planets um, you know fairly well no matter you know which, which one you're looking at um, and it's actually you know it's a pretty decent uh, general use light pollution filter too so it kind of covers you there I mean certainly not as good as you know some specialty filters for certain objects like an, an O3 filter or an H beta filter depending on which object you're observing uh, but it's, you know, it's certainly better than not having anything. So um, just for your first light pollution type of planetary filter, um, after you, you already have a variable polarizing filter, this is one that I highly recommend. I mean, I use this all the time and I've got, you know, like pretty much any other filter that you can imagine. So and this is the one that I, you know, I find that I use uh, the most commonly. So awesome, awesome to have. All right, so the last thing is, uh, last but not least, and that's eyepieces. Um, so I actually, you know, currently already have two videos on, you know, on selecting eyepieces, so I'm not, you know, definitely going to go into that. Um, but, you know, depending on what type of scope you bought, uh, depending on what type of eyepieces you have, you know, eyepieces are certainly a worthy, you know, upgrade to your kind of like observing arsenal. Um, I highly recommend the Batter Zoom, uh, the 8 to 24 millimeter. Um, great, great eyepiece, you know, just, you know, kind of not knowing anything about you, just kind of a hip shot as, as to, you know, what eyepiece I would recommend. Um, again, watch my videos that I already have on this. This is just the eyepiece that I use the most and I've got, um, you know, probably like over three grand worth of eyepieces in my collection and this, this is just the eyepiece that I use the most often. Uh, but, you know, watch my other videos, you know, do some research because this is like a really hairy subject and I mean there's like cousins of different eyepiece designs and just, you know, you can spend millions of bucks on these things. So if you guys have any questions, comments, uh, leave them in the link below. 
Um, if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. And um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.